Hello, I'm Yulia from Elastic and in this community video we're going to go over all the necessary information you need to become an expert in the new agentic AI space. Let's get started. This is chapter 2 discussing vector and semantic search. In the first video we've learned how large language models can be used to generate embeddings, thus allowing us to perform vector and semantic search with the text that has been turned into vectors. Let's take a look at how that works. Also a key point here that links LLMs with what will later transition into the RAG phase is vector and semantic search. So just as I mentioned, there's techniques to turn natural language into numbers. And most of the time those numbers are vectors, something that you probably remember from school, we would have the X and Y axes and we'll have, if we have a, a 2D uh, point such as house prices and square meters, a classic example, we're able to plot those data points into a 2D space, into a 3D space, and so on and so forth. If we have a multitude of dimensions, it becomes a really complex vector space that we can't really visualize with our human math understanding, but computers are able to process really fast. This allows us, like we mentioned, to have the understanding of closely semantically related words, uh, to give a very 2015 example, we had the idea that king and queen might be together in the semantic space, but we also had operations such as king minus man plus woman equals queen, which is a very rudimentary understanding of how language works and how those words are related, but something that really helped machines progress towards this NLP space. Now, once you understand the vector space and what we call embeddings, which is transforming these words into a vector point that is able to exist in this multidimensional area, we're also able to do searches. Let's break it down visually. Starting with a text you'd want to search through, we first split this into various chunks. These can be a few words, a sentence, or a paragraph, depending on what model you're going to work with. Each model has a context window, which is defined as a number of tokens the model can take in or process at one time. And a token can be a character or a word, depending on the model. You want to make sure that the chunks are about the size of the context window for maximum efficiency. Each model is also designed for a specific task, so you want to make sure you use a model that is appropriate for your project. These can be question answering models, recommender systems, or similarity search. For similarity search in particular, we have embeddings. And these can be of two types. First, we have dense embeddings, where each chunk becomes a vector with a lot of small values representing weights for each dimension. These can be very good at capturing semantic similarity and meaning, but it can be quite computationally heavy to work with due to their large size. On the other hand, we have sparse embeddings, which are based on term frequency. At the most basic level, we have lexical or term search that just represents the presence of a word by a one and all other values are zero. This allows us to search for things a lot faster later on by doing a lot of the processing in advance. For example, if we look at how these look in Elastic, turning a sentence into a dense vector gives us a lot of values, and the sparse embedding generated by Elser shows us the similarly close terms already stored in the inverse matrix that will allow us to search later. Once we have our vectors generated, we can put them in the same vector space, which then allows us to interpret the distance between them. Using cosine similarity, we're able to see that closer vectors will have a small angle, opposites will go in different directions, and the rest will be unrelated words. There are different math formulas to use here, but cosine similarity is the most popular. So to put this in action, when we look for something new like API specification, we first use the same model that generated all the other embeddings to also turn this text into a vector so we can plot it in the same vector space. From here, it's a lot easier to retrieve the closest neighbors, which will be the most similar other chunks. Using semantic search, we're then able to understand things like acronyms and to see the words that are closely correlated because they usually appeared together in the rest of the text. On the other hand, using the classic term search can also very quickly give back very accurate results. So most techniques nowadays use a hybrid approach taking the results from both different methods and putting them together with some boosting such as re-ranking. And that is how vector or semantic search works. Now that we've figured out vector and semantic search, we can go to the next stage. 
Using RAG, we can retrieve information with the best algorithms and hybrid approaches, and then use it to augment and generate new answers. Let's take a look at the next video. Or if you want to go deeper, look at all the resources linked in the description. We'll see you there.